To what degree is occasional synesthesia useful survival-wise for humanity? I, the question asks, asker, is a synesthete. Um, yeah, I I think it it is. I mean, I think I think I think two things. I think that you know rare phenotypes. Um, are valuable because they introduce uh, variability into a system. You know, and you know the the go to example for this, um, which I like not just because I'm a left hander, but because it's an obvious one, is that across cultures, across time, as far as we can tell, ten roughly ten percent of people in any given population are left handers. Um, that right handedness is always dominant, um, but that except in um, in those strange situations, um, such as for instance, my father grew up in, uh, where um, left handedness is considered a sign of the devil and you're, you know, you're basically forbidden from, from using your left hand, left handedness always shows up at this, you know, rare persistent level. Um, and it's, it provides value, um, in, you know, if, if you had everyone being right-handed, then there are going to be situations where you don't have the optimal person for the job. And um, synesthesia, uh, which allows you to basically cross the usual sensory boundaries, I feel like could have a similar, similar virtue. So there are two things buried in here. One is the specific things that a synesthete encounters or perceives may be of value themselves. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then there's also, so that uh, I feel is likely. Sometimes mm -hmm. it will be true. Um, but there is also the question of slight diversity in pathway just simply results in a population yes. that sees more stuff. And so even if synesthesia had no direct perceptual value, the fact of some people having had the developmental experience of not experiencing things on the same channel that others did would cause them to be somewhat differently wired in a way that's often useful. And I would point out colorblindness also uh, shows absolutely periodic utility. Yes. Uh, it is. It's not persistent. Um you know, be, because there's such a strong genetic component, it's not at a stable rate across populations in the same way. But it is, but it is, I don't know of any populations in which it is totally absent. Right. And the red green colorblindness, uh, I believe, turns out to be adaptive. And in modern circumstances or relatively modern circumstances, people may know that colorblind people were used to spot camouflage in World War II. Um, because they are less sensitive to color, more sensitive to pattern. That's definitely, I don't have red, green color blindness. I've got a different color blindness, but uh, that's definitely something. Always got to do it differently. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but, I, you know, I do find, whether it is downstream of that or not, I do find that there are certain things where color is distracting and pattern is what you're after that I'm pretty good at. You know, yep. spotting bat tents, for example, I was mm -hmm. very good at. Um, I've been quite not good. so much bad RVs. You weren't as good at that. <laughs> no, bad campers. <laughs> um, yeah, but uh, but anyway, yes. The, I know it's a cliche, but neurodiversity yeah. has intrinsic value, which doesn't mean that every variant has value, but it does yeah. mean that uh, you don't want a population of people who all have the same strengths and weaknesses. Mm -hmm.